Doom Eternal was an outstanding game. While I personally did not like the multiplayer, the single player was outstanding and well worth the purchase alone. However, the game's post-launch has been marred with criticism, the most notorious being the infighting between composer Mick Gordon and the people at its software and Bethesda, with Mick voicing his unhappiness with the quality of the soundtrack's official release, and it explained how Mick failed to deliver on the work on time despite its flexibility on the contracted work. The issues between the two became so problematic that id Software and Mick decided to go their separate ways, and development of the game's post-launch DLC will not include work from Mick Gordon, and it's unclear if any future Doom product will include his work, which is a shame considering that his musical score has become part of Doom's identity. The latest controversy is from the inclusion of the Nuvo anti-cheat software to the PC version of the game. Following this update, fans took to Steam to review bomb the game as expected when fans are unhappy with a the game they immediately start pelting the game with negative reviews. Now I'm not a PC expert, I know I'm a console peasant, but according to the post on Reddit, the update provides kernel zero access that allows access to basically everything in one's computer. This was a similar worry against Riot Games' Valorant anti-cheat software which, in addition, many have been voicing performance issues and Linux compatibility ever since updating the latest Doom Eternal update. The most concerning issues include blue screen, performance issues, inability to launch the game on Windows, drivers continue to run after being uninstalled, and overall not working on Linux. This was confirmed by Bethesda on May 17th in a tweet and they are investigating the issues. Its software decided they would remove the update in the upcoming 1.1 update and addressing issues. Marty Stratton, executive producer of Doom Eternal stated, I want to provide our PC community the information on a number of topics relating to update 1. We, which we released this past Thursday. Our team has been looking into the repost of in the instability and performance degradation of some users and we've also seen concerns around our inclusion of the Nuvo anti-cheat. As is often the case, things are not as clear cut as they may seem, so I'd like to include the latest information on the actions we're taking as well as offer some context around the decisions we've made. We are preparing and testing PC-only update 1.1 that includes the changes and fixes noted below. We hope to have this rolled out to players within the week. Stratton explained the reasons for implementing the unpopular update was 1. To protect battle mode players from cheaters now but also establish consistent anti-cheat systems and processes as we look ahead to more competitive initiatives on our battle mode roadmap. So they've confirmed that this was to try and create a stable field for competitive play for the upcoming battle mode roadmap so there may be ranked mode for the battle mode coming soon. Next up, establish cheat protection in the campaign now in preparation for the future launch of Invasion which is a blend of campaign and multiplayer. Kernel level integrations are typically the most effective in preventing cheating. The Nuvo's integration met our standard for security and privacy. Players were disappointed in Doom 2016 with our delay in adding anti-cheat technology to protect the game's multiplayer. Stratton went on to state they will be removing the software in the next PC update and examining other methods to implement anti-cheat in multiplayer but not single player. Which I agree that cheaters, whether ranked or unranked modes, ruin the game for everyone. So this anti-cheat software did provide a level of access that was uncomfortable and could prove problematic for those skilled enough to exploit it. But Stratton's uh, ability to explain the situation openly and honest to the players was great. Stratton went on to say, It is important to note that our decision to include anti-cheat was guided nothing than our, the factors and goals I've outlined above all driven by our team at its software. I have seen speculation online that Bethesda, our parent company and publisher, is forcing these or other decisions on us. It's simply untrue. It's also worth noting that our decision to remove the anti-cheat software is not based on the quality of the Nuvo anti-cheat solution. Many have unfortunately related the performance and stability issues introduced in Update 1 to the introduction of anti-cheat. They are not related. So it did clarify that Bethesda did not force this on them, which is great. They are openly communicating, this is what we did and this is our process and we're sorry about it. They are directly communicating to the player and I can't reiterate that enough because 
honestly, that's a rarity in the game industry today. Many expect AAA developers and even publishers to just lie to their audience or just piggyback on PR speak, but it is welcoming to see that it is openly communicating to their fans and telling them this is the issue, this is why we did it, and we are owning up to our mistakes. Strident stated they discovered and have fixed several crashes in their code related to custom skins and it was not caused by Denuvo. Through our investigations, we discovered and have fixed several crashes in our code related to customizable skins. We were also able to identify and fix a number of memory related crashes that should improve overall stability for players. All of these fixes will be in our next PC update. I would like to note that some of these issues were very difficult to reproduce and we want to thank a number of community members who worked directly with our engineers to identify and help reproduce these issues. Finally, we believe the performance issues some players have experienced on PC are based on a code change we made around VVAM allocation. We have reverted to this change in our next update and expect the game to perform as it did at launch. So according to it, these issues were caused by code and issues, which hint that the Nuvo could make a return. The way I read this article is that the issues were caused by its code and not the implementation of the software. Overall, this was an excellent and professional article explaining the entire situation. It clarifying any concerns, providing reasons for their actions, and finally addressing them to their fans clearly. So that's the video. I'd love to hear your opinions on the matter in the comments below. Also leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time. Stay awesome everyone.